Behind me, a whole set of battlements, right? 18 metres up, 20 yards up in the air. That is probably the first time a longbow has been shot from up here since that siege in 1450. <laughs> Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and I am back with Joe Gibbs, amazing archer, and he is just the man for this job. There is a burning question that I've wanted to know for a long time, and I don't think you really know the answer to. I don't know. Which is, you shoot an arrow from up on top of battlements, it's going to go further. Yeah, we all know that. How much further? We have found this amazing location, Stanton Harcourt Manor House. It's not just that it's glorious, it's not just that it's full of history and, and everything about it is just extraordinary. We'll talk about that later. But this was the site of an archery siege in 1450. That tower was attacked and besieged in an archery duel. Really interesting stuff. So it is the perfect spot for us. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go down into the field. Joe's going to shoot for distance. We'll measure it. We're then going to go up to the top of the tower. We're going to shoot for distance. We'll measure it. Doesn't get easier than that, but it will give us an answer to a question that I've wanted to know for years. So yeah, so I've got a 140 pound Swiss Ubo. Yeah. Today is quite a nice crisp day. I'd be happy if I shot over 250 yards. So that'd be a good distance for me. So that's the kind of thing, yeah. 250, maybe yeah. 260. Yeah, um, anything over that is a, is a bonus. We have to do a level shot today because to it, compare the two. You to compare the two because you've got a fair, few different factors, wind, weather, temperature. Um, it's, and temperature matters that much? Uh, yeah, so the, the hotter the weather, the more soggier the bow's gonna be, have less, mm -hmm. less power. Um, colder, the more powerful it's gonna be. It's, it's not overly hot today, so we should be able to achieve some fairly good distances. Yeah. Let's yep. go. Let's do it, <laughs> right, excellent. <laughs> so the first stage is to find out how far Joe can shoot this bow today on a flat field. So 250 yards away, we got one of our night targets over there. But this is the field that Joe will be shooting into from the tower. So the tower is actually over that way. So we're gonna do that next up, but first, how far can you shoot today? Let's have a go. So here's our man at 250 yards. Okay. All your arrows are beyond. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our furthest one. It's 19 yards from here to the target. The target was 250 yards from where you shot. 269. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good for a, a tired bow. Yeah, <laughs> not that tired. So 269 <laughs> yards and well, let's go and do it from the tower. So okay. we'll see what we get from that. Let's go. We're on top of the tower roof now, and Joe is going to be shooting at the target all the way over there. But before Joe does his shooting, I've got to tell you a little bit about why this place is so special and why we're doing it from here. Harcourt House has an amazing history. So uh, Robert Harcourt was a knight who came over with William the Conqueror, and it, the same family lives here now. The land was granted to them in the 1100s. In that intervening period of countless generations, other amazing things have happened. And one of the really notable ones is in 1448, there was an altercation. And Robert Harcourt, another Robert Harcourt, was on the way through at Coventry, met Sir Humphrey Stafford's retinue coming the other way. There was a fight. Some people died, went to court, didn't get resolved. 1450, they lost the plot and they came down here with a retinue of 200 guys and they attacked it. The house is not a fortified house. So they retreated to the, either the church or the chapel tower. We're not sure which. So this is the chapel roof. That's the church. But the top of that church tower might not have been here at the time. It's a later addition. But what we do know was there was an archery duel. 200 guys outside, don't know how many archers. Mm. Apparently over a thousand arrows shot, but only one death. They laid siege to this place for six hours and then they ran. And we don't really know what happened, but I think probably it's that thing where it's like a bit of a guerrilla raid. You come in, you cause your trouble, and before the constables mm. from Oxford can come out and sort it, you're off again. Mm. And I think that's probably why it's only six hours. However, what it does do is give us an opportunity to shoot from this roof here where proper medieval archers being attacked would have shot. You're going to shoot from here out into the field where we were before and compare it to that flat shooting. Now, at the moment, we're 18 metres up, about 20 yards up. In stories, that is about 
five stories high, to give you an idea. Okay. Have you got any, uh, any guesses on what's going to happen? I have got a guess, and I'll explain why at the end, or why okay. not, I'm right or not. I don't know, I'm sure. you got a guess? Yeah, I, I reckon 20, I'm thinking about 20 yards. 20 yards. It. Yeah. I'm thinking about five or six. I think it will make very little difference. I've got a reason for that, but I might be utterly wrong. So anyway, let's find out and uh, put a pint of beer on it. Oh yeah, let's do it. It's a nice pub across the road. <laughs> Brilliant. But there's a little bit of health and safety here because obviously our lines of sight are not great in this location. So I've got some spotters out. I'm just going to call them now so we know that it's safe out there where we're shooting. All good. Clear? Clear. Brilliant. Joe, take it away. Great stuff. And that is probably the first time a longbow has been shot from up here since that siege in 1450. How do you think you did? Um, could you see where they went? Yeah, I could see where they went. I think they have definitely gone a bit further. It's a bit off-putting standing up here and shooting. I've got these, yeah. the roof and the lead bits. Um, but yeah, I, think, I definitely think there's a, it's got some, some more yardage in it, for sure. All right. I mean, do you feel like for the sake, because it is a different environment here, yeah. For, for the sake of helping out a bit, do you want another couple of shots or do you want to call it a day? No, let's have a couple more shots. You go for it, Joe. I mean, it's not every day you get to do no, this, is it? Exactly. So I'll have two for distance and then one at the night. Just amazes me every single time. Is this last one for the night? You, you can buy me two pints of beer if I get this. Why, you're great <laughs> if you get the night from here. I tell you what, shall I just empty the quiver at it? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Are you compensating for the wind? I'm a little, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting shoved over that way. Yeah. For the amount of wind that there is, it's more, maybe because we're up high. Feeling a bit used up? Yeah, a bit tired now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just remind everybody, 140 pound bow. You couldn't do another minute of that, I'm guessing. No, no. I mean, that, that was about your limit? Yeah, I could have done a couple more arrows, but I would want a break after that. Yeah, because again, looking at the description of what happened here, there were a thousand sh arrows shot over a six hour period. 200 guys, don't know how many of them were archers, but you know, that is only one arrow an hour mm. per person who was present. You know, what it was not is some sort of medieval machine gun. No, it is hard work to keep, keep it up like that. You, to be honest, it's, that's unfeasible to do that. Mm. You, you would want a couple, like, a couple minutes between shots. Because yeah. you'll yeah. be losing distance and you'll yeah. be losing accuracy. Exactly, off that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And arrows are precious, especially out on campaign, yep. you know, or in a siege. Yep. Um, anyway, Joe, brilliant. Right, Thank let's get see what we got. Okay. Well, we're back in the field now where they landed. We're amongst your bonus shots where you were shooting a little bit flatter, a little bit less for distance. Yeah, a little bit less. It was, it was a bit difficult to see where they were landing, especially in front of this, the man target that we had up. So mm. a lot of it was actually guesswork. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with a few of these shots, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely line and we're mm. just coming up to it now, exactly, but you got yeah. one four or five yards yeah. short. Yeah. You know. But yeah, so now we're coming up to the ones where you shot for distance. So we do know which ones these were. We marked them up. Yep. 
So we've got our five now, which have gone, it must be said, significantly past. I think your pint might be looking safe, Joe. I'm feeling thirsty. So So our target there that you were shooting at, 250 yards. On the flat, you got 269 yards. 296. 296. So 27 yards further from shooting up there. So it's fair to say, (laughs) you are right, I am wrong. Thank you. Which is really annoying. (laughs) But it's also good. Because that's the whole reason that we do this stuff, because we don't actually know. So I'm just going to nick this arrow and explain what my thinking was, why I thought it wouldn't be much. When you shoot an arrow, it goes up, obviously, at a steep angle. But then as the speed and the energy gets lost, it flattens out, and then the drag starts to slow it down as well, and you end up with an arrow angle which is completely different on landing to it is on launch. And so I was thinking that those 18 metres extra the arrow is going really quite obliquely and it's not going to make very much difference on distance. Completely wrong. Made a massive difference. (laughs) Anyway, so it is a really simple conclusion and one that is staggeringly obvious, I am sure. You shoot a longbow from high up and it will go significantly further. But we've got battlements to play with. We've got a siege to talk about and we all want to know the differences between longbows and crossbows. So I brought myself a windlass bow and that's going to be our next film. We're going to go up again to the roof and we're going to have another chat. See you again. Joe, thank you. Thank you.